guys, my beautiful lovelies. Hello, it's Emmy. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to be dabbling in a little bit of molecular gastronomy. So that is a very long word, <laughs> actually two words. And basically it means food science. It's like bringing science into your kitchen, using substances that you may not be familiar with to kind of deconstruct and upend what you might think or consider as food. At this point, it's become pretty common practice. You can actually find examples in pop and cooking sets where those little Japanese candy making sets, the ones that I made back when I was living in Japan. That was my first experience with actually playing with an example of molecular gastronomy. And it was in the sushi making kit and it was absolutely wonderful. So in that kit, you're making a candy version of ikura, which is salmon roe, which you often have in sushi bars. So basically what you're doing is mixing a couple powders with water and it contains some flavoring, but also contains something called alginate, which is a gelling compound. And you slowly drip it into the other solution you made. And what happens is a sphere of gel forms as it cascades down through the other solution. And it makes these perfect, beautiful spheres of caviar, which are not caviar at all. They're just little gel balls, but looks exactly like ikura. But when you taste it, it doesn't taste like it at all. So I think that's the kind of ethos of molecular gastronomy, kind of toying and playing with your expectations. So today I'm going to attempt a version based on this book that I found at the Boston Science Museum called Kitchen Science. This is a really fun book. I bought it so I could do projects with my boys. Rainbow explosion. So lots of fun little experiments playing with density explaining ceviche, the great dinner dissection. So I love science and we do a lot of this stuff already, but it's really nice to have a collection of recipes and ideas when there's a rainy day or a snow day or something. So today's kitchen experiment is inspired by this recipe, the agar lab, shows you how to make noodles and these beautiful spheres or little pearls. This is also called spherification. I believe they use alginate and a slightly acidic solution to create the spheres in kitchens, but instead we're going to use agar and oil. So I've used agar agar many, many times in previous recipes. I'll put the links down below to those videos in case you missed them. And it has similar properties as to gelatin in terms of coming to a solid state and kind of being flexible and jelly-like, but it's slightly different. First of all, it's vegetarian. It comes from seaweed. It does not come from animals. Second, the gelling property is a little bit different. It's a little bit firmer and crunchier. So if you see my Kohaku tool video or my edible crystals video, which is absolutely incredible. I go into depth in describing the differences in terms of texture between gelatin and agar agar. At any rate, you can find it pretty readily as opposed to alginate just in your local Asian market. Go to the dessert section and you'll find little packets like this. Today I'm going to be using this. This is a telephone brand. This is the brand that I find most readily and this comes from Thailand. So I've also dabbled with a Japanese brand and that has completely different gelling properties. So today I'm going to do this and if you're going to try it, I would attempt using the same brand that I use. In this recipe, they recommend using golden beets and cranberries, natural sources of color, but I'm not doing that. I'm using artificial colors because I want rainbow pearls. I just went to the corner store and picked up a bunch of different flavors electrolyte drinks. I didn't even know it came in this color. I've got pink, I've got red, I've got blue. And I also picked up a bottle of Mountain Dew because I'm curious to see if I can do this with soda as well. I mean, with bubbles, not sure. So before we do that, let me tell you about this shirt. Do you love this shirt? I love this shirt. I helped design this shirt. I'm so proud of it. I love the football jersey style and it has the name of my best friend, Winston. <laughs> if you don't know Winston, I'll put all the links down in the description to my friend Winston. He's the crumb that occasionally appears on my face, usually on my lip <laughs> while I am eating. So this is gonna be a limited edition shirt. If you would like to get yourself a Winston shirt, you can get it for the next 14 days. I will put the link right down below in the description if you would like to get one yourself. It comes in three different colors. It comes in green, red, and black. So get yourself a Winston shirt. All right, let's go ahead and start this recipe. A cup and a half of the beverage here. So this recipe calls for a cup and a half of basically water and you can flavor it any way you choose. You could use juices, you could use water, and then you can use extracts. But that's one of the reasons why I chose to use an electrolyte drink. It's already flavored and already colored. So yeah, it smells a lot like Gatorade. Let's give that a taste. Kind of tastes like Gatorade too. It's got a little viscosity. Tastes a little bit blue raspberry. 
And now we're going to add six grams of agar agar powder. Sprinkle that on top. So the reason why we're heating this up is we want the agar agar to dissolve into the liquid here. And that requires a bit of heat. It smells like a raspberry icy. <laughs> so while I'm making all of my agar solutions, in the freezer I have a glass of oil. So you want a tall glass filled with some kind of lightweight oil, vegetable oil, canola oil, and you're going to have it chilled. And what's going to happen is that the drips of hot agar, once they go through the cold solution, will form the spheres. All right, that's coming to a boil. Make sure this is tempered glass, and I'm going to pour my juice mixture into that. And then I'm going to add some hot water to the base of this to keep this nice and toasty while I make my other gels. Look at that color. Mm, doesn't smell bad. Let's taste that one. Oh, that's terrible. It doesn't have any acidity in it. So it just tastes kind of sweet and artificial, maybe a little bit buried. Oh, oh it says it's kiwi strawberry. It doesn't taste like strawberry to me. I actually like this one better in all of its unabashedly fake artificialness. Mmm, smells like pineapple. Let's try yellow. Ugh. Yeah, it tastes like pineapple. A little bit kind of guava, peachy. The vitamin waters, I don't like the sweetener. It tastes like artificial sweetener. I don't like that at all. That smells like Hawaiian punch. Wow, it tastes a lot like Hawaiian punch too. Fruit, punchy. That has a nice balance of a citric acid in there though. I like that. And that's sweetened with high fructose corn syrup. Yep, no artificial stuff, it's just corn syrup. Mm -hmm. it smells lemonier than I remember. and a lot sweeter than I remember. Wow, don't like Mountain Dew at all. Nope. So it's been a very long time since I've had Mountain Dew and this bottle is very deceiving. It is certainly not this green. And so I'm going to add a few drops of food coloring so I can get my nice green color. And this is just neon green at a couple. So there's a lot of foaming going on in this and I suspect that has to do with decarbonation. So we'll see how well this works. Not a bad green. So when you do this recipe, don't be a genius like me and put your oil in the freezer because this is what happens. I guess oil solidifies. I guess oil does kind of harden and freeze. I didn't think it did, but apparently it does. It's starting to, you know, melt a little bit. But yeah, this is like lard. Look at that, almost all the way through. I had it in there for maybe a half an hour. Brilliant, Einstein. Brilliant, you're so smart. I'm going to pour some of this into here. Now I'm going to add some oil that I have chilling. Put some regular oil in there. All right, let's see if it tempers things out a little bit. And we have transparency. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. yes. Next I'm going to do is take a dropper or a syringe and I'm gonna drop my gels into the cold oil. Here we go. Oh, it's floating on the surface. Oh, there they go. <gasps> yes, it's totally working. Oh my gosh, yes. So they're forming on the surface and then they're sinking down below. Look at that. Yes, it's totally working. Okay, okay. Ha! Ah! This is so great. So the bigger the ball, the heavier it is, and the more it's sinking. I love it! My oldest son is in school right now, so when he gets back, we're doing this. Awesome. So that was five mLs of the red. I love it, it's like a lava lamp experiment. I love it. Okay, now blue. Oh, there's blue. Not nearly as vivid as the red, but you can still see it. So stinking cool. I'm doing that and do next. See how well that one shows up. Oh. oh, that's so fun. 
boom, 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 boom. So stinking cool. Now we're gonna collect our little spheres. I'm gonna strain them through this basket. Oh my gosh, yes. Ah, look at them, they look so great. They're so perfect. So excited about this. Oh my gosh, they're so beautiful. I'm so excited about that. Now that we have our spheres strained, we're gonna rinse them under a little bit of warm water to get rid of some of that oil. Okay, be right back. These turned out so beautiful, look. Oh my gosh, they're all over the floor. That wasn't so beautiful. <laughs> Alrighty, I'm so excited and thrilled about how well these turned out. The color combination actually works beautifully. Love everything about it. Love it, love it, love it. Love that it's feared. Love that the colors turned out. Love that they're different size pearls as well, large, small, and that they're just so transparent and beautiful. Now, right off the bat, I don't expect them to taste any different than the drinks themselves, but maybe something happens when they're in gel form. Let's find out. Let's try a red fruit punch. Itadakimasu. Actually, you can still taste the fruit punch. Just a tiny little drop of it, but you can taste it. And it's not as sweet. And surprisingly, maybe because it's a neutral flavored oil, it doesn't taste oily at all. Let's try a blue one next. Oh, look at that. I got two. <laughs> so not surprisingly, it tastes exactly the same. It has that raspberry blue flavor or blue raspberry flavor. But what is different is it's not as sweet. In this tiny, tiny amount, it seems to taste a little bit more sour, actually. Interesting. All right, let's try a little combination of all of them. See what happens there. So stinking cute. Here we go. Mm. You get kind of a fruit punchy, crunchy jelly thing going on there. Super fun, delightful. So this is an absolutely delightful project. My favorite part was taking our solutions and dripping them into the cold oil, seeing them form and then slowly settle to the bottom. Absolutely delightful, wonderful, magical. And then of course, eating them is really fun too. But the results are just stunning and I highly recommend doing it with your kids because you don't really need that many ingredients at all. And just the process itself is just so much fun. Alrighty, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. If you try this project, share it with me on social media. Be sure to go grab yourself a Winston shirt so we can all be on the same team together. And I shall see you in my next video. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye.